this year's Nobel Prize for Chemistry is really exciting, doesn't really involve much chemistry, but it's really very important for a whole series of reasons, understanding life, curing diseases, and all sorts of other reasons. I don't know much about it, but let me tell you what I do know. The prize was shared by three people, half to an American scientist, David Baker, at University of Washington, and the other half to two computer scientists, Sir Demis Hassabis and John Jumper, both at Google DeepMind. The prize is to do with the structure of proteins, the biological molecules that you find everywhere in all organisms, and these are the molecules that are encoded by DNA. So for the first time, I've been able to wear my DNA tie. The problem with proteins, the intellectual problem, is that they consist of chains of so-called amino acids, some people call them amino acids, and there can be several hundred for a big protein. And these chains wrap up into a particular structure. Because there are so many of these amino acids, the number of possible shapes they can form is enormous. For a big one, it approaches the number of atoms in the universe, if not more. So the question is to try and understand why they form particular shapes. And the prizes have come in two different approaches to the same problem. David Baker has been using sophisticated deep learning software. Don't ask me details of what deep learning software is. Probably on Brady's computer file, you can find out about that. I wanted to talk a little bit more about deep learning. But he's been using deep learning software to allow people to design a protein that will fold into a particular shape. And this is only for fairly small, short chains, like this one. What the DeepMind team has done is to solve the problem from the other end. Given a long sequence of amino acids, predict what shape that will fold into. They have used artificial intelligence, which I think is related to what Baker did, but a different computational approach. One of the things that has helped them is that every year, since I think about 1994, there has been a competition set by a number of universities in the United States working together, which names, I think, a hundred proteins where the structure has been determined by very careful experiments with x-rays or electron microscopes and has asked computer scientists to predict those shapes. And then after a certain period from the beginning of the competition, people send in their entries and see how successful they can have been. Professor, why is it important to know how the proteins are folded up? Isn't it more important what they're made of and what's in them? The structure of the proteins is really important because without the structure, you cannot understand how they function and what they do. And in a body like yours or mine, there are millions, possibly even billions of proteins. And people can know their sequence, but without knowing their shape, they cannot necessarily even guess what the protein's function is within the body. Professor, does this feel like a chemistry Nobel Prize to you? I know the physics prize was very computery. So was the chemistry one this year. Like, how do you feel about this? Well, I think because the problem is so important, I feel fine. I mean, everybody in science use computers in some ways 
And the fact that this uses artificial intelligence doesn't worry me. But you have to imagine that for what deep mind did, it's a bit like having the results of a whole series of games or matches in the, of the same game, like chess matches, and then working out what the rules are from those matches and then applying those rules to new games. The really important breakthrough came in 2020 during the pandemic when the Google DeepMind team led by Demis Hassabis and John Jumper managed to predict the structures of proteins with a 90% accuracy of where the individual atoms were. And that's an extraordinary achievement. Since then, something like 2 million people have used their software and the number of structures of proteins that people understand has gone up by about a factor of a thousand. So from 200,000 proteins to 200 million proteins. Their program, which is called AlphaFold, is not perfect because it builds on a database of the proteins that have already been characterized, but it's pretty good. And as they get more and more experimental data, then you'll be able to improve it. But the important thing is that now people in a really quite short time can get a good idea of the structure of a particular protein without having to do these very long experiments. And even if sometimes they're a bit wrong, they're much better off than they would have been before when you had to grow crystals, do x-ray crystallography and so on, which could take years. Determining the structure of hemoglobin, which was one of the first proteins to be characterized, took 33 years for just one molecule. And in four years, they've done 200 million. So you can see what a huge jump it has been. What David Baker did was to design a new protein, which nobody had ever seen before, with 93 amino acids, to make a particular shape. And then his co-workers synthesized that chain, and it did, in fact, form the structure that they predicted. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close to what they had predicted. And since then, they've made a huge variety of different shapes to carry out different functions. You can use them for sensors, for different purposes, and so on. So now, with the work of these three scientists, you've got a whole new way of approaching the problem of protein folding. It must be stressed that both the groups are quite big groups of people. I think the DeepMind team, I didn't count the number of people on their video that they have about it, but there are probably 20 or 30 people on the team. And David Baker has a big lab and some spin-out companies as well. But they represent the people who have made this achievement. And it's fantastic. Demis Hassabis, who led the um, DeepMind team and who founded Google DeepMind, says that he has two ambitions. One is to solve the problem of intelligence and then to use that to solve everything else. So they're working on all sorts of other areas, weather prediction, playing games like chess or Go. But I think really the important message is that new computer approaches can sometimes solve problems that scientists have struggled with for more than half a century. There was quite a cynical joke was made on the BBC radio just after the 
Nobel Prizes had been announced. AI winning physics and then AI winning chemistry. And the professor who was talking suggested that perhaps AI had made the nominations as well and decided they would win the Nobel Prize. But I don't think that's true. Thanks for watching. Some of you may know we've been making videos about the Nobel Prize winners for well, over a decade now. If you'd like to see a playlist of those videos, I'll include a link in the video description. We also do the Physics Nobel Prize over on our physics channel, 60 Symbols. I'll include a link to that as well.